Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you of all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open up our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll say the Benite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. And let's say, uh, res read responsibly by half verse, Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O oh, my people. Incline your ears to the word of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mystery. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord. And, and the wonderful, wonderful works he has done. done. He worked marvels in the sight of our forefathers. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zohar. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day. And all night through with the of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness. And gave them drink as from a great sea. He brought streams out of the cliff. And the water gushed out like this. reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? A reading from the letter to the Philippians. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, 
any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should, co should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? 
they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all were not John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later, he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of the Lord. So I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm going to turn this toward me too, because I'll be dumb. Uh, when, I, when I read the gospel or read scripture, I, for some reason, songs often pop up in my head. And this week, <laughs> and I, I promise I'll explain, um, the, the, ver, or the lyric from uh, the song by the band Steeler's Wheel, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, here I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So my, my generation, Generation X, one of the things that was a hallmark of our generation was our struggle with authority. Uh, from uh, movies like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and The Breakfast Club and, and one of my personal favorites that no one seems to have seen, PCU, um, to bands like Nirvana and Rage Against the Machine and the Sex Pistols, we were wired to question authority. Of course, Growing up into adulthood over the last couple of decades certainly hasn't helped. These days, even if we don't completely dismiss those in authority, we wonder about who we should give authority in our lives. Let me say that again. If you're like me, you wonder who should have authority in your life. And that's the real crux of authority, right? The person in authority only has that authority because the people agree to it or acquiesce to it. But we'll come back to that. What even is authority and how does one attain it? Well, Max Weber is a famous sociologist, and he explained three distinct types of authority. Uh, the three are traditional, legal, rational, and charismatic. Traditional authority um, is authority because it has always been. Uh, for example, the British monarchy uh, is, is a great example of this. The, they still have Queen Elizabeth for some reason. Um, it's not because she wields any sort of great authority other than the fact that it just always has been. Traditional authority can be intertwined with race and class and gender, but in most societies, for instance, men are more likely to be privileged than women and thus hold roles of authority. I'm not saying that's good. I'm just saying we're just defining this, right? Uh, also, members of dominant racial groups and upper class families hold that sort of traditional authority. Uh, for example, the Kennedys, right? Um, they're kind of our royal family, I guess. Um, and they kind of exemplify that model of traditional authority. Then you have legal rational. Um, and this, this type of authority is less about a person and more about an institution. Uh, the power lies in kind of the system or the ideology, not necessarily in a person who implements it. So the church, the government, the the role of the President of the United States, whether or not the person fits that, 
our Congress. These are all things that are our legal, rational authority. They're institutional authority. But last we have the charismatic leader. Charismatic leaders rise to power because, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. They have charisma. Charismatic leaders uh, often rise during a time of turmoil. They draw their, uh, the draw to them is often uh, so great that their followers are, re- are willing to continue to follow them even when they go into hardships. As I'm saying this, people in history and in present should be popping up in the head. Charismatic leaders tend to hold authority for a short time, and according to Weber, they're just as likely to be tyrannical as they are heroic. So we have Joan of Arc, Napoleon, Churchill, Hitler, Dr. King. These are all examples of charismatic leaders. So today in our reading, we encounter Jesus in the temple and he's teaching the people. And all of a sudden, here comes the elders and the chief priests and they say, whoa, buddy, who gave you the authority to do that? It wasn't like, he wasn't like me. He wasn't fully installed by the bishop, right? <laughs> it was appropriate that this was right after yesterday and just kind of wrote itself. <laughs> but that being said, the leaders and the elders knew exactly who Jesus was. And I think they knew, at least in their hearts, exactly by whose authority he was teaching. The problem is, they knew he was challenging their power. And they couldn't have it. One of my favorite parts of this encounter is how Jesus traps them in an answer. And he does this all the time. Um, the kind of snark and um, wit that Jesus uses with the authorities of the church really cracks me up most of the time. If we... Um, <clears throat> He, so he says, you know, that he talks about John the Baptist with his answer, and, and John the Baptist was legendary at this point. He was definitely a charismatic leader, and the te- temple leadership knew if they dared to dismiss John the Baptist, they were going to have a riot on their hand. So they said they couldn't answer him, and Jesus says, well, that I'm not going to answer you. Um, makes for great television, really. I guess if we were to classify Jesus in Weber's classification, at least up to this point in the story, he would fit that charismatic lead. John also would have been a charismatic leader. And um, John pointed to Jesus as the Messiah, and hence the elders were trapped. This is really the beginning of the end for Jesus. In the section after ours, he tells another parable that so infuriates the religious leaders that they begin their plot against him. And then he says something about paying taxes, and that's like the end. We'll come to that in a few weeks. Jesus speaks with authority. But he speaks with authority not just 2,000 years ago. He speaks with authority today. The problem today is that so many people try to hijack that authority for their own gain. I guess if we really think about it, things haven't changed much, have they? Which brings me back to those song lyrics. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. So many Christian leaders today seem to have sold out for political power and for money these days. So the question for us then is how do we know who to listen to? How do we know who is using that authority of Jesus correctly? Who has the true authority in speaking the word? The most important authority, of course, is the voice of Jesus. 
And if we know Jesus' voice, we can better wade through the sea of voices attempting to speak for him. So the question is, how do we know Jesus' voice? Well, we know Jesus' voice because when Jesus speaks for the low, the low are raised up. When Jesus speaks, the forgotten and the abandoned are restored. When Jesus speaks, the circle of love and grace is always drawn wider. We know Jesus' voice in our heart. Sometimes it gets clouded by the voices of today, but we do know Jesus' voice. And I pray that today and as we go throughout our week and time together, that we remember whose authority is really true in our lives. And we remember his voice in our hearts as we try to wade through the complication of today. Amen? Well, let's stand together as we're able and say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. O oh God, you declare your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us in the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth. And sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh. And hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come everlasting life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.